benefits from gut health to your gut microbiome to brain health. And not mentioned here, of course, these things can dramatically influence cardiovascular function as well. But we know that it does influence the type of bacteria that we have. And it tends to be more the beneficial bacteria that are really impacted. So we've talked a lot about nutrition and the role nutrition plays on the gut microbiome, fiber and polyphenols and and how these food constituents can improve the production of very important commensal bacteria and their small molecules that they produce, such as the short chain fatty acids, butyrate in, in particular, and acetate propionate. But exercise, this is what we talk about here on True Health, other lifestyle factors that can influence our health. But do we know how exercise impacts the gut microbiome? Is the type of exercise that you're doing beneficial for gut health, for bacterial composition and uh, the microbiome. So exercise can enhance the number of beneficial microbial species and, and enrich the microflora diversity, improve the development of commensal bacteria. Athletes exhibit higher diversity of gut microorganisms compared to non-athletes. And there was a study looking at rugby players. They had higher activity metabolic pathways that played a role in enriching their short chain fatty acid production. So the more aerobically fit people are, they tend to have higher levels of short chain fatty acids, higher levels of acromancia. Remember acromancia is one of those beneficial bacteria that we talked about that can influence metabolic health and influence our blood sugar levels and, and overall health of the cardiovascular system. It is connected to so many different things. And so higher levels of acromancia tends to be associated with those who exercise the most. There is a study that looked at six weeks of endurance exercise intervention and how that can impact the gut microbiome. And it's been shown to modify the composition and functions of the gut microbiota and increase fecal short chain fatty acids. And the compositional changes were more pronounced, more pronounced in lean individuals than obese individuals. But nevertheless, aerobic exercise, moderate exercise is extremely beneficial to, to our health and helping us to produce those very beneficial health promoting bacterial metabolites and improve the composition of our microbiome. Higher frequency in exercise leads to diversity in the Firmicutes phylum. The most responsive to exercise-induced changes was Phagolite bacterium prosenitsi. This is a beneficial bacteria. And when we exercise, the better the benefit it is to our gut bacteria. I'm going to remind you again, <laughs> These beneficial bacteria have health promoting effects and have been connected to so many different disease states when their numbers are low. So acromancia, low numbers is connected to IBD, as we talked about, obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, even certain types of cancers. Firmicutes tend to be low in, in patients who have colorectal cancer. And so by exercising, you can increase the abundance of firmicutes and uh, phacolab bacterium, which is one of those beneficial bacteria that's a part of that class of bacteria. When phacolab bacterium prosenusi is low, what are the consequences of that? Well, this bacteria, beneficial bacteria, is the most abundant butyrate producer. And I want to emphasize this. Butyrate is actually the most studied small molecule, short chain fatty acid that's produced by our beneficial bacteria. And when butyrate is released, it can, it can act locally within the gastrointestinal system and regulate the intestinal permeability, the gut barrier, also protect the intestinal mucosa and prevent that intestinal permeability. And it can enter circulation systemically and influence the health of our nervous system, 
our cardiovascular system, our liver, um, our endocrine system. So butyrate has not only benefits in, in acting locally within the gastrointestinal system, but it can enter circulation and have more broader systemic effects on our health. And this particular bacteria, F. pros for short, tends to be quite a driver in certain disease states when its numbers are low. So inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, celiac, diabetes, colorectal cancer, Parkinson's disease, bipolar disorder, major, major depressive disorder has been shown. These conditions have been shown to have lower levels of phagolibacterium nitsi that plays an important role in Side the gastrointestinal system, but because it's a butyrate producer, it does produce those important small molecules that have profound effects systemic. So exercise here can impact not only the microbiome, but it influences the health of the entire gastrointestinal system. And there have been exercise intervention studies looking at exercise as a, in the management of IBS symptoms, and it has been shown to be quite effective for IBS patients and in, in being able to help the, the gastrointestinal physiology and make it work better, and then also improving the health of the gut barrier exercise influences the brain health and it's been connected with increasing brain derived neurotrophic factor which enhances neuroplasticity and we talked in our previous topic about the impacts of stress and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and exercise can modulate the HPA axis and help with healthy release of our stress hormones, modulating stress hormones, and cortisol. Exercise directly influences the gut microbiome, as we talked about in our previous slides, increasing bacterial diversity, increasing firmicutes cutie families of bacteria, which we have beneficial bacteria in that family, and acromancia, and increasing the production of short-chain fatty acid production. And when we we use exercise, exercise as an intervention for all these different things, you're getting a, a wide range of benefits from the gut, from gut health to your gut microbiome to brain health. And not mentioned here, of course, these things can dramatically influence cardiovascular function as well. And so exercise should definitely be something to consider. Moderate exercise um, can definitely, they're still working out the mechanism as to how it influences in the gut microbiome, but we know that it does influence the type of bacteria that we have, and it tends to be more beneficial bacteria that are really impacted. So in summary, what's important is to, when you're eating, always keep in mind, is what I'm eating going to help my body feel better, help my gut health, and whole plant foods need to be emphasized in the diet and provide, it provides a fermentable fiber that's necessary for our beneficial bacteria. Prebiotic foods, three to five grams per day is what's typically recommended. Mintable, soluble fiber is that type of fiber that's going to build those short chain fatty acids and raise our commensal acromancia and our f pros beneficial bacteria and lactobacillus and, lac and, and bifidobacterium, these other beneficial bacteria that are increased from the consumption of these foods, consumption of polyphenols and phytonutrients, other bio plant bioactive compounds. And again, aside from gut health, it, this type of nutrition is extremely beneficial at inhibiting pathogens, it's anti-inflammatory, and it stabilizes and modulates lipid and glucose metabolism. And so for that reason, you would also eat this type of nutrition. To make it simple, eat five colors of the rainbow with each meal if you can, and consume 30 different plants per week. That's optimal, but they're between you know, 40 grams, 30 to 40 grams of fiber. And, and the more fiber you eat, is more beneficial. You have to be careful. There are some conditions that can be aggravated by rapid titration, rapid ingestion of fiber. 
So when introducing fiber, the large amounts of plant-based foods, make sure to take it easy, titrate up slowly to make sure that you're not having a side effect of constipation, which can happen when you rapidly introduce a large amount of fiber. Engaging in moderate aerobic exercise can support the growth of commensal bacteria and enhance production of short chain fatty acids, which in turn supports metabolism, immune function, and overall cardiovascular and our central nervous system. So that is today's presentation. Thank you so much for joining us again for another round of 